Okay, so in talking about uh, infection, one of the things we want to go over is uh, something called Koch's postulates. All right, and we were going to have a lab uh, on this as well um, and then cover the basics of it in lecture. Um, so we're just going to kind of cover the basics of it right now. You should be able to explain uh, Koch's postulates, how it would be applied to a particular problem. Uh, we might have an essay question on this uh, on our exam. So a long time ago, people didn't really know what caused diseases. Uh, people even attributed a long time ago to things like demons. And they didn't know that there were actual living things that caused them. Eventually, when people did, they had a hard time finding those organisms that actually caused the disease uh, and then actually proving in a way that, that that was the organism and not something else that was just there um, uh, and had no negative impact. So Robert Koch uh, <clears throat> developed a, a couple tests using the scientific method um, that are very logical. And, and it's something that's continually used today uh, in assessing um, <clears throat> and, and finding different infectious uh, diseases, different organisms. Uh, and there's a couple limitations to it that I'll talk about, but we're going to go over the, the basics of it right now. So the, And I'll talk about also what we would have done in lab because uh, it would kind of relate to this as well. <clears throat> so uh, in this situation, you have two individuals. One is healthy, and one is either sick or dead. Uh, and it died because of some illness, something happened to it. So what happens is you take tissue samples. from those organisms. So it might be blood, it might be something from a tissue, and you look at them, and then you compare the two. And, and for here, what we would see is there's something uh, in the sample of the sick or dead organism that's not uh, in the healthy one. So right now, our hypothesis you know, would be um, that this particular new organism, this unknown organism, causes the disease. And this is just a hypothesis we're testing. We don't know if that's true or not. So that's that's kind of what the, the postulates are really about. So we then try to take this sample, uh, put it onto a plate, and, and see what grows there. Uh, and then we find that there's no growth uh, of anything unexpected. But for this one here, we have some organism grows. growth of some organism uh, is it the one that caused a disease we don't know is it is it disease causing question mark still at this point we don't we don't know that some people might just end there and just say hey look this one's different than that one there's something else there uh, that's it that's the thing that caused the disease that, that may not be true. It may be something you just didn't isolate or identify from the, the healthy individual. Uh, it has nothing to do with the, the disease at all. So you have to continue with this. Another difficulty or problem with this, uh, still happens today, is culturability. Not everything can be cultured in the lab. So that's one limitation here. You might say, oh, nothing grew here either. But there is something there in the sample. That's why it's important to both uh, view things, say, under a microscope tissue samples and staining to actually find or probe for other organisms uh, and different types of cells. Uh, and then you can see if you can grow them. If you can grow them, then we move on to the next stage. <clears throat> so we get this organism that grew up on our plates that, that we don't find in the healthy individuals. And we say, here we go. We're going to get a healthy individual. And we're going to expose them to this organism. And so two options. Option A is here. Nothing happens. If that was the case, we would reject this hypothesis and we would say, nope, that unknown organism does not cause the disease. In B, uh, it does cause the disease. Uh, it, uh, the organism gets sick or dies. The second thing you have to also evaluate is it's in the same way. as the original. Let's say the original didn't have a fever, but it became ill and died. Now this one gets a fever. That's some different and that would have different types of organisms. 
uh, and the toxins can initiate a fever response, uh, meaning it might be actually two different organisms. It may not be the same organism if the symptoms are different. So they have to have the same symptoms as well. But if that's the case, again, we're still not done. You can say, oh, look, identified, uh, found an organism, isolated it, injected healthy individuals, and they died seemingly the same way. So that must be it. But that's still not it yet. Uh, we really need to, what we'd have to do now is verify that this organism is in fact the same one that caused the original disease. Otherwise, it could be something causes a, a different disease and, and you're not really getting at the, the same thing as the original. So we go back and we repeat um, some of these same steps. We, we view the cells. We view tissue samples and we find that it looks like the same organism. Same organism as we found over here. You know, it's stain, let's say, say same gram stain. Uh, you know, it's maybe they're both gram negative bacilli. So you could say, okay, that's there's a lot of gram negative bacilli, but then that would corroborate it. If this was a gram positive organism, we say absolutely something different. It's not not the same thing. So if it's the same organism, uh, if it looks like the same organism, then what we would do is try and culture it again. They perform some biochemical tests on it, find, yep, uh, it looks like it is the same uh, same organism that's grown, and then tests could be performed to, to verify that it is the same thing. And then you can conclude, yes, this is the organism that caused the disease in the original. And that's an important starting, that's really just the starting point, because now you can test for antibiotics and other sorts of things you can use specifically against that organism, uh, as opposed to things that might be very generic and may not have any effect or help at all to individuals who are infected. How we were gonna do this in lab, it's not with uh, infecting mice or with anything that was a disease. What we were gonna do is get some milk and some yogurt. Uh, milk, when we look at it under the microscope, there'd be little particles, um, but that would be it. And when we tried to put milk on uh, an auger plate, nothing would grow uh, because there's no living bacteria in the milk. It should be sterile. As opposed to the yogurt, when we take the yogurt, we'll find particles in, in the milk, and sorry, in the yogurt, but we'll also find cells. So we do a gram stain, we'll actually see that there are um, bacteria, gram positive bacteria in the yogurt. And then we would streak it to try to culture them and we'd find we can culture some bacteria, maybe several different species. What we would then do is we would take some of those and we would put them in milk. And now if the milk didn't turn to yogurt, if it stayed as milk, they would be the wrong bacteria that produced the yogurt. But if we then saw yogurt form from the addition of those cells, we would say oh, this could be the one. What we would then do is take a little bit of the yogurt, look under the microscope, stain it, see if it looked like the original slide. And then finally, we would culture them on the plates again to see if they grew the same way with the same pattern. Uh, and we could do a couple tests on them to verify that they're the same thing. <clears throat> so that's the idea. So cautious postulates are a way of helping isolate and identify uh, an infectious agent. All right. And this is typically for bacteria um, uh, and how to identify them. Uh, make sure you can explain... You know, just the overall process and answer some questions about it for your exam.